Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. Live here in Las Vegas, theCUBE is covering exclusively the AWS reInvent. Got two sets, this is set one, set two behind me. We're here in a startup called Zettabytes, Rishi Yadav, CUBE alumni CEO, and Sudhir Jengur, Gen CTO. Hot new startup, Zettabytes. Formerly your entrepreneurial, your other company's still going, InfoObjects. Welcome back. Thanks uh, for, for having us here. Uh, I don't know, seventh time, eighth time? I mean, we, we love CUBE, guys. Yeah, so InfoOptics is the mothership and doing really, really great. And uh, today we are launching Zettabytes, which is our hybrid cloud, cloud integration platform. Yep. Uh, we are starting with the AWS and then it's going to have integration for other clouds. So, so startups are impacted, and we were talking yesterday about kind of a demarcation line between a point in time, I say 2012, maybe you can say 2014. If you were born before 2012 or 2014, you probably didn't factor the cloud as large scale as it is. But after that date, you're a newborn startup, you look at the cloud as a resource and an opportunity. So what's your perspective as an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, you start a company, you look at the big beast in Amazon, Opportunity, challenge, what's your view? So actually 2014 was an inflection point for two things. Number one is that the big data, big data, it started with the hyperscale companies and at that time, you're talking about Facebook and Yahoo and other places, but it was not enterprise ready. And we suddenly saw the adoption, John, you have been following the big data journey from the, yeah. I think the cloud era basement days, right? So in 2014, it, it got enterprise adoption and the things like uh, security and governance which were of uh, not much concern earlier, they became a front and center. Another thing which happened was that around 2014, 2015 time frame, the public cloud, which uh, for nine, uh, eight, nine years, uh, essentially AWS, that was about SMBs, startups, about saving money for them, right? That also started getting adoption in the enterprise. And when you're talking about enterprise, there you cannot tell them that, uh, you know, if you, deploy 10 servers on AWS is going to save you $200,000. They would say we already have $500 million spent. Right. We, have, yeah. we have these huge data centers. So they needed some more value than that. But uh, Talk about your company, Zettabytes. So you're launching a new company. What is it? What does it do? Why are you starting it? Take a minute to explain what you're doing. Yes, absolutely. So the Zettabytes uh, idea came from this convergence of the big data, public cloud, and IoT. And, and market is ripe for it. And the challenge was that we talked to a lot of customers, a lot of them have already started working in the cloud and some of them were planning to start the journey in the cloud. And the challenge was that at the same time they also wanted to build a big data lake and he talked about it a lot today, right? S3 being the largest big data lake. Yeah. So now the question was that do you really want to go the old school route in which you are using Hadoop and other services around it? and then you do lift and shift to AWS, and then you uh, transform to PaaS. So you spend one and a half, two years in doing Hadoop, then you spend another one and a half, two years uh, doing uh, the PaaS, the cloud native transformation, or is there a better way? Yeah. And then we realize that uh, whether the clients are on AWS today, or they are going to be in one year, they need the same experience, the same cloud experience, the same AWS experience which they have on the AWS, they want, on-prem. Now that includes the, uh, the uh, cloud native APIs, but also the agility and everything else. Okay, so I, I mean, let, let me ask should, uh, should hear a question. So you're the CTO. Mm -hmm. I know you're technical too, so I'll have both of you. So the old days, I'm a developer. Mm -hmm. I have my local host, I'm banging away code, and then I go, okay, I'm done, and I say ship to the server mm -hmm. for QA, whatever, and even the cloud. Mm -hmm. Businesses are, want that same kind of functionality mm -hmm. on premise. Yeah, yeah. They want to go to the cloud, so all the developers are changing. They want that local host-like feel. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have to write code, ship it to a server, put it to the cloud. They just want instant integration to Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you're doing? Is so that some, yeah, so Zeta by it right? Because that seems what I think you're doing. Yeah, so Zeta provides that seamless experience. So you have the same set of APIs which you normally would do on AWS. So you still use the same AWS SDK, you still use the same as AWS CLI, yeah. right? 
use all the AWS APIs. We have abstracted out those APIs on this platform. Build your uh, like code base based on those APIs. Now, using Kubernetes, you decide where this workload will go. Okay. Right? So one of the challenges with AWS though is that they release services like constantly. Mm -hmm. I think we had the announcement at the keynote today, it was like another hundred or so services that they're releasing. So, so how do you choose which ones, to, like do you support all of them or do you focus on specific no, ones? No, uh, first we are focusing on a few uh, specific ones which are mostly being used. Yeah. We are starting with like say for example S3, Lambda, Kinesis, Kafka, and Spark and SDFS are there from day one also. Right, okay. Then all of these are like say, uh, uh, what we are doing, like say, uh, today, if you see the announcement, they have launched uh, Kubernetes now, yep. the container management service. We, we have that flexibility from day one only. Okay. So we have that in our uh, appliance, and using that, even for example, your uh, workload says, some of the piece should run on the, uh, our on, like say, on-prem appliance, some of the piece should go to the cloud, that is also possible. Okay. So, so you're, selling a, minion, you're selling an appliance. Yeah, yeah. So one minion, like say a Kubernetes minion, might run on the uh, AWS. Few of the minions might run on your appliance. You can easily, like say, do the, all the content management. It's a business model. You, they pay for the box or is it a service? Oh, they get the box as part of a service. What's the business model? So uh, we do both. So it's a software platform as well as, a, as an appliance. So the beauty of appliance is that everything is already optimized for you, right? So, so yeah. that makes it very easy. But if a customer has a chosen uh, uh, hardware platform, uh, we can definitely deploy it uh, on that also. And adding to the, the 100 services thing, and I think that's a great point, that AWS has so many services now that uh, can you really go and figure out which services are most optimized for your needs. Yeah. That's where you, you need a partner uh, on uh, on-prem side. Right, and that's what we are going to be. And another thing, as Sudhir mentioned, the EKS which they announced today, the Kubernetes. So you have Kubernetes on-prem, AWS is supporting Kubernetes, and we are also supporting Kubernetes. So okay. if you want to work uh, uh, your workloads at that level, it's completely seamless. And you were saying before that your target is enterprises, because so the, the appliance delivery model and the simplicity of being able to manage a lot of different services, I mean clearly, being able to manage things at scale is something that enterprises are crying out for because otherwise I have to, uh, AWS is great if you want to hand build everything yourself, it has all of these components that you can assemble like Lego, but if I'm an enterprise, I want to be able to do that at scale. Humans don't scale very well, so I need some technology to help with that. So it sounds like you're actually providing the leverage to get enterprise humans to be be able to manage AWS. Is that, that a fair characterization? Absolutely, that, that is definitely a very important aspect of it. Okay. And another aspect of it is that uh, if uh, you do not want to have some workloads on AWS for one reason or another, uh, IoT workloads by definition cannot be on AWS, uh, low latency workloads, okay. right? that they cannot be on uh, AWS. In the same way the workloads in which uh, you need some extra level of security. So, the, so within uh, uh, your data center, as much as we beat down the data center piece, right? Uh, you have your own security and governance, and you can do that, and, and that's coming back to your question that are we going to support all 100 services? Yes, but the local execution we are only going to provide for some services, which by yeah. their very nature make more sense to run on-prem. Yeah, the, on the core services. Core services. Yeah. All right, so how yeah. do you guys um, going to sell this product? Take us through the startup, uh, situation, you're here, are you talking to customers, why they buy you, what's the conversations like, are you, do they, when do they need you, take us through your conversations here at reInvent. Yeah, so, uh, so before that, uh, the AWS has been super successful uh, for the greenfield applications, the new applications, the applications which are born in the cloud, but uh, when it comes to transforming the existing application, it becomes a big, big challenge. Right. So a lot of customers who are coming to us, they are uh, interested in how, can, how I can seamlessly What's transform What's an example them. workload? An example workload. So the example workloads for us is going to be the big data workloads, uh, which uh, uh, we have specialized uh, in for uh, last so many years, right? So one of them can be IoT. So probably you can explain more about that. Yeah, so the, that example could be, for example, from today's keynote, if you see Expedia case or like Goldman Sachs case, they spend a lot of time in converting their code to the AWS specific code, right? right. Millions of lines or billions of li lines of code. What we are doing today, if you are developing your application, tomorrow it could be future ready for AWS. Okay. So it's your convenience, we are actually merging your experience with AWS. Right. right. 
So it's making it easier for enterprises yeah. to make that transition from yeah, yeah. what they're doing today so across the cloud. That, that's a big, yeah, so big that deal for them. Tomorrow when you're uh, like, say, ready to go to AWS, you yeah. choose, you, your data will decide whether you want to run your workload on our appliance or AWS. Okay. So your and market is hybrid cloud, basically. Yeah, and Anyone doing hybrid cloud should talk to you guys. Yeah, and code would yeah. be future proof. What you are developing today? All right, so is the product is, shipping? Okay. Yes, so we, are, so we are in the early beta stage. We already have five beta customers, and the product is going to be ready in a week's time. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, so, so, so beta now. Yeah, yeah beta yes, is already, beta. already ready. So, uh, early access Open beta or restricted beta? It is going to be restricted beta for now. Uh, then it's going to be open beta. So yes, so we are going to add five more customers in next uh, two months okay. uh, for the beta. So I'll take a minute to explain the type of customer you're looking for. Are they all filled spots anymore? You have five more spots, you said? Yeah, we have five more spots for, for, the, okay, for you, the beta. Who are you looking for? Put it out there. Any large enterprise uh, which is planning to move to uh, AWS, uh, but start struggling with all the nitty gritties, uh, looking at the 100 services, and uh, how, do you, uh, how do you integrate your existing applications there. Yeah. So how do you take those baby steps, right? So we, are, so we are going to not just them take the baby steps, but sprint through it. So that's okay. what our uh, Zettabytes plans is for. Rishi, congratulations on the new startup launching here, Zettabytes Open Beta, five more spots left. Check them out, Zettabytes, if you're doing hybrid cloud or true private cloud, they got five more spots available. It's theCUBE, bringing all the action, the startup action here, and also the conversations at reInvent. I'm Jeff Furrier, Justin Warren. We'll be back with more after this short break. <laughs>